Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk. I'm Heidi Smith, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the United Kingdom and I love making boxes and fancy folds and all sorts of stuff and I've got some basic stuff too but what I really want to do is, is kind of show you how easy it is to make some of these things so let's get started. So today I'm working with the lovely Waves of Inspiration this is a um, stamp set that's an early release and die set that's an early release from the new uh, uh, catalogue coming out in May but it also comes with some beautiful papers that are only available while stocks last. So first of all the papers are 12 by 12 and they're sort of images of hand poured acrylics. Um, so you, here you go, we've got lovely colours and they're all sort of blues and greens. If you love seaside scenes, um, obviously waves, these are perfect. So these are the patterns. They so say they come in 12 by 12, so this is only just of a, a small sample of them, um, but they are absolutely beautiful. And you can see Pacific Point, um, you've got Knight of Navy, uh, we've got some Calypso Coral in there, um, we've also got Daffodil Delight, we've got some Granny Apple Green as well, um, and yeah, that's, that's the Daffodil Delight as well. So you get 12 by 12 sheets, um, Two sheets each of six designs, 12 by 12, and then you've got these beautiful foils as well. So Knight of Navy, horrible ring light is showing, Knight of Navy, you've got um, uh, um, you've got Coastal Cabana and you've got this lovely sort of silver smoky slate as well. So um, I'm not actually using the foils on this, I'm going to use some of this paper and I um, wanted to make a gift box for um, one of my friends. So I thought, what better one to use because she loves the sea. And I wanted to show you how to get this beautiful wave um, stamped. So as you can see, what this lovely little box. Here's the pelican. Uh, there's a rhyme for the pelican. Um, it's got it in the dies. I should have shown you. OK, so stamps. So these are the stamps. Beautiful wave, super sentiments, pelican on, on, on a post. And then you've got dies. Now the dies don't cut out the actual wave. They are designed to layer over the top. So you're, they're going to get a real 3D effect. We've got these clouds, which I've just um, die cut there. You've got not only the cloud, but then you've got these accents as well. So you've got the kind of, I've just done those in smoky slate just to show you. Um, Oh, you've got a die for the pelican and you've got this really useful uh, slider sort of tag type die so when you cut it out you've got a little aperture at each end to, th to thread onto the ribbon to be a slider you've got some birds so you're going to need your well you're going to need i'd recommend adhesive sheets with these um you can cut out some little birds there to fly in the sky um and yeah and then you've obviously got this bigger uh, one as well so so the small slider as you can see there fits the happy birthday <laughs> magnets um, and then this one fits the you know the one about strength it fits this one as well as you can see um, this one you'd have to in effect uh, do two so what I would do is I would die cut two and then um, pop the center put them on uh, on each end um, but I'll show you that in another video so um, what I would recommend to get a really good impression on this um, is that you use your stamparatus. Um, so, here we go. Oh, I didn't show you how the box works. That would have been helpful. So this slides off, and this is like a Malteser box. So we lift up the lid, we've got a flap here, and then we've got space inside for our gift. Um, I say just a nice little structure there. You could obviously put a layer of basic white on there as well with another image if you wanted to. Um, you could add, add obviously your um, uh, message inside. And then the ribbon is the lovely um, denim ribbon that comes in the Blessings Heart and Home um, bundle. And it's this lovely, say, just a really nice ribbon that obviously coordinates really well with any, any of our um, colours. Uh, so for this one, I th I'm going to use some uh, sheet. Oh, I picked out a sheet and now I can't find it. Okay, there's paper. So I'm going to do it in uh, alternate colour weight. So I'm going to make my box um, in my Coastal Cabana. I'm then going to use this lovely um, paper with some Pacific Point accents. And uh, then we can do it as a wave. So for the wave, what I have done with the wave is... I've cut a piece of cardstock which is about 8 by so 14 and a half. So I'm just going to pop that in there 
and I've already lined up my image so that it's nice and square so I can then use my grid lines to get my wave in place. Okay, and the first thing I did is I actually inked it up with some balmy blue on the top there. In fact, I went all over with my balmy blue. Then I came in with my sponge daubers. So I've got some Pacific Point, I have got some Knight of Navy and then I've got some Coastal Cabana. So with the Knight of Navy I just came in on the edge here sort of where it would be sort of dark and I kind of tried not to, to do too much of a straight line. Um, by inking over in a solid colour first you're going to get that, that coverage. Oh that might have been Pacific Point, oh well. Okay, right, let's start again. Let's do Knight of Navy. Okay, that is definitely Knight of Navy. Out of the way with the Knight of Navy. Pacific Point, so this brighter blue. And then I kind of came up the waves with that. So you really kind of don't know what it's going to look like till you've um, till you finished, and then finally coastal cabana. And maybe coastal cabana might have been a better one to kind of um, start off off with as a sort of a colour rather than the balmy blue. But you know, hey, let's see how it goes. Then important thing, huff. <sighs> Lovely headshot of me. Really breathe all over all over that just to kind of make sure it's really well activated. And then in with your stampratus, give that a good press down. And then there we have a beautiful wave. Now, if you wanted a bit more colour, you could always come back in um, on there. So for example, um, and put a bit more in. The beauty of the stampratus is, is you can do that. But I'm quite happy with that um, for my stamping. Stampratus useful for so many different techniques. Um, now you want a bit of basic white because we want to stamp our pelican as well. So you're just going to want a, a, a scrap. Here we go, one scrap. Um, and I've used smoky slate for this. I think that's actually a thick, um, thick basic white I've got there, but. These are red rubber, so you don't need to um, use your, your stamping pierce mat. You'll get a great image because you've already got the cushioning on the back of that stamp. Um, just line up um, your image. With this one, I kind of line up the bottom um, and then sort of wiggle it to get my pelican head nicely lined up. Pop that through your die cutting machine. And it's a nice open one, um, but as always, you know, cut it through on an angle. Uh, it's always better for your dies to do that. And there we have our lovely pelican. There used to be a rhyme that I, that I used to irritate the whole family with um, about pelicans when we were in Australia, where obviously there were loads and loads of pelicans um, near where we were. Um, I've also die cut two of these because I'm not sure which colour I'm, colour I'm going to use yet. And I've also die cut one in basic white as well. Um, in terms of the stamping, I'm going to stamp my sentiment onto here and I'm probably going to use, I think I'll use my Pacific Point because it's a really sort of vibrant blue and I think that'll stand out really well. So all I'm doing is inking that up, I've just got it on one of our small blocks. Hopefully try and get it nice and square. There we go. Oh, actually, no, I've done a really rubbish job of getting that square. Never mind. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I will trim that down. So I'm actually going to trim that down by hand. Um, I was hoping to keep the, uh, the stitching part on it, but do you know what? doesn't always work out that way, does it? So I'm just using the, because it's a nice straight one, I'm hoping that's going to work out okay. So there we go. So I'll pop that to one side. 
Um, now what you want is to create your box. Um, so with this one, um, I have cut some of the layers already, but I'm going to show you how to construct this, um, the main part of the box. So you'll want a whole sheet of A4 cardstock. Um, I have worked it out in inches um, as well. It comes out slightly smaller because I'm, I have used the um, US cardstock length um, for that. So you can, um, it'll work obviously if you work in, in centimetres um, or if you work in on UK, you know, worldwide A4, but for the shorter 11 inch uh, one, I've, I've worked it out. So it's slightly different, but it works all the same. So we're trimming this down to 28 and a half centimetres, keeping it 21 centimetres wide. And on this long side, we're going to measure and score at seven and a half, at 10 and a half, at 18, and at 21. Then turn it and you're going to score on the short side at an inch. So I'm going to do that on the right hand side first and then flip it round. So at one uh, centimetre at four centimetres at 17 and at 20. Other pieces of card that you will need, uh, you're going to, if you're going to decorate the sides, um, we will want two pieces of card that are um, two and a half by seven centimetres and two pieces that are two and a half, so, so that's two and a half by twelve and a half centimetres, two and a half by seven centimetres, so that's, those are the ones you want. We then want to cut our DSP. which of course I have ah, I've put down in front of me. So, to cut the DSP, we want two pieces which are 12 centimetres. So I'm actually going to cut this to 12, where am I? Um, yeah, let's cut it to 12 centimetres first. Then I'm going to cut two pieces at two centimetres. Now you could do sort of smaller increments. I'm just doing this first of ease of measurements rather than small ones. So those are my two pieces. Um, I then want two pieces which are um, two by 12, I know I've done my two by 12 centimetres, two by six and a half. Okay, so cut this one to, then to six and a half and cut two pieces at two centimetres. Two put those where I can find them and two centimetres again. So there we go. So that's just one, you know, that's a sixth of a sheet of, of um, our paper. Next we want to trim our piece of uh, our decoration for the front and we want that to come down to six and a half by twelve. So what I'm going to do is first of all cut this the edge off and cut it down to twelve. Then I'm just going to trim the edge, that bottom edge, so that it comes right down to the bottom. And then trim that to six and a half. So by going for the larger piece, it just gives me more to work with so that I, I, I get that wave where I want it to be. Okay. Now I've already got a piece of, of card ready to layer here. And this piece is seven by twelve and a half centimetres. There we go, just add some Tombow on there. Okay, then I can layer up my pieces of DSP. You say that gorgeous, these are such rich colours, I and mean, I, I couldn't resist the paper um, because I just I, I shall use it for scrapbooking sort of holiday pictures. You know, um, yeah, we, we we sail um, quite 
fairly regularly when we go on holiday in the Greek islands and um, so you know these colours are just perfect you know that wonderful um, you know it go it, we do get everything from these gorgeous sort of coastal cabana colours through to these deep Pacific points I prefer it when it's coastal cabana because that usually means the water's nice and still um, if it's going a bit uh, Pacific point or night of navy uh, it probably means it's a bit more stormy um, but uh, yeah, we, ha we have had some fabulous holidays um, and hopefully more to come as well. I've done that. I think maybe I might have been better with Bermuda Bay on this looking at it now um, to contrast. But um, probably because the paper I've picked hasn't got a lot of the Pacific point in it. Might have been better with a different one. And I haven't cut that one very straight. Oh, well, never mind. So now let's do our box construction while those are drying. Grab your bone folder and make sure we reinforce these these um, score lines really well. Um, you know, whenever you're making a box, I would always say, you know, really reinforce them because that will help uh, your box go together um, and have nice square corners on it as well. And it makes it easier to, for your trimming as well. So just run your bone folder up and down those. And as you go, you can just make sure that then, you know, your lines are not, your score lines are nice and true. I possibly didn't score as firmly as I might have done on a couple of those, but never mind. Okay, so now you're going to want your snips. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out this, cor this corner. So you're taking just a straight line down each side. And you're going to do that on all four corners. And the lovely thing about this paper is, um, is because it's not directional, you can easily do the, the sticking um, of the panels without actually, um, before, before you actually construct your box, without worrying that you're going to get something upside down. So once you've cut those four corners away, this is the only bit that's slightly different to usual. So I'm going to cut down this um, narrow skinny tab, but I'm not going to cut it away. I'm going to tuck it out of the way and then cut straight down the side there. And then just tab this smaller section and do the same on the other. So again, cut up the skinny tab, fold it out of the way. Same again. So on all four of those. And again. Now if you forget and you cut it off, it's not the end of the world. It just means it will it will move about rather than holding in place. So Ooh. Once you've done that, let's pop our panels in place. So, pop these on the side here. And then these long ones are going to go on those. Can quite easily see where those panels go I think. Funnily enough Pacific Point was the was one of the first colours when I first came across Stampin' Up and I was buying um, sort of retired stock which I didn't understand about at the time and uh, I bought some paper with Pacific Point so I thought oh yeah I'll get a, get a pack of Pacific Point um, 
card to go with it. I'm still on that Pacific Point card even now. Gosh, that's seven years. I'm just, I'm literally just running out of it now. It just shows how little. So I would always say, you know, make sure when you buy a full pack of card, it's one you're going to use. Um, the mixed um, colour family cards are so much better because you've just got what. So there. once you've put all those panels on, I've just marked the halfway along this edge and used a hole punch just to punch a little notch out of that. So now we can get on with actually gluing our box together. Um, you're going to want a, quite a strong um, adhesive for this. It's obviously a 3D project. So I would recommend either Seal Plus or Tombow for it. So I'm just using my Seal Plus to kind of come across on each of those tabs, once right up by the edge and once towards the um, close to the end of the tab. That just makes it neater and gives it a bit more security. So that's the first bit of adhesive that we're going to use. And all I'm going to do is just line those up, as you can see there, and push into place. So again, just line it up and then push from the inside. At this place, at this stage, don't worry about our other tabs. You can see just lining that up. Then the last one, just manipulate that. Again. Okay. Now, what I recommend is you oh, fold those out. If you fold everything out, and then fold these skinny tabs in, like so. And all I'm going to do is just pop a bit of liquid glue onto those four tabs, like so, as you can see. Then fold in and pop those into the corner, sort of vertically. I hope you can see that, I'm just sort of pushing those down. And it's just a kind of way of, of creating a little box that ha has a little bit more um, interest you could always line it I mean what I will do is pop some tissue into this um, but once that's done we're almost there so we can just pop a couple of dimensionals on the back of our lovely pelican um, it'll take the larger ones on the bottom section you can see here but you'll probably want um, a mini dimensional um, or two at the top because you don't want that flopping around okay so we pop that there And I rather like the fact that he kind of sits, say he, there we go, just there. Uh, do you know what, I think I'm going to go with the deeper blue on that. Um, just pop a couple of dimensionals on the back of your sentiment as well. Again, just, you know, all the, we're just adding a bit of texture and kind of dimension um, to our project and just pop that in between those two gaps and then for the ribbon I mean the great thing is because I'm not tying a bow on this I'm not going to use that much ribbon so I'm just kind of overlapping it enough to tie a knot um, always a good idea to have a separate pair of ribbon scissors if you can uh, paper does blunt your scissors so if you can have a second um, second set just for ribbon and I tie a bit of ribbon onto mine so that I don't forget which ones are my ribbon scissors and then just thread that ribbon behind here apologies Pull that along and bring my ribbon up to the other side. <laughs> Making it look far more difficult than it actually is. Okay, so just with that ribbon nice and flat, just tie a knot in that. You don't have to pull it terribly tight. Um, but what you can then come in and do is obviously just trim that off. Just a nice little flat knot, like so. 
And there we have our pair of pretty um, Malteser box style boxes using the beautiful new waves of inspiration. And if you'd like to get your hands on this set, then just pop um, use the links below in the description box or pop along to my blog for this project and you'll find the links there to purchase it or just visit heidismith.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. Do come back and see me again soon and please do hit the subscribe button. It really does make a difference. Um, and if you can also hit that notification bell, you'll know when I've posted another video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.